Okay, so for our next speaker, how to start. Um, one of the things I love about the digital marketing industry is the transparency. Um, you know, it's really open, people are happy to share, people understand that you're not giving away, you know, insider secrets, we all get smarter from each other. So when we get up on stage and we share, here's what we're doing and here's what we're thinking, we're really, we're not, we're not doing anything new, we're really just following in the footsteps of people like our next speaker. Um, myself and Brendan had the pleasure of going to MozCon uh, two years ago and um, we were blown away, there was one, one guy who just totally sold, sold the show and it's, it's Will Reynolds, our next speaker. Wolfgangers have been to see him twice since, we've travelled to London and we've seen him here in Dublin and in both occasions people were going to the event because they wanted to see Will Reynolds. Um, Will Reynolds is one of the, the top, not just speakers, but his agency is over 100 people, one of the most respected agencies in the States and he's you know fantastic guy, he, he shares his SEO insights, he shares his business thoughts and he really he puts a lot of himself and his personality into everything he does as well. So I'm so happy that Will chose to, to come to Dublin to share his, himself with us today. Please give him a really big Irish bull of us. We welcome Will Reynolds to the stage. Thanks for having me, Will. Thank you. All right, let's do it. All right, well, thanks for having me. Um, this is completely awesome. I've cut out about half my slides in the last half hour, so uh, if this is a little rocky, I apologize. I also just flew in about five hours ago, um, and I'll be back on a plane tomorrow to go see my son. All right, so uh, this is what I believe. So I, I, I have an agency. We're probably about 130 people now, um, so I'm constantly looking at where search is going and thinking, what do I have to do to make sure my agency doesn't become the next agency that's like, oh, my God, it's Panda. We're all getting fired. Like, no, let's just become content marketers now, you know? Um, so I'm, I'm focusing on people like crazy. And the reason why is because I'm a consumer of the same thing that I do. I search and try to find solutions all the time. And how often am I extremely disappointed by what I find? Think about it. How many searches do you do where you're like, this is complete shit? I wish I had all these people as clients. So there's millions of, un of unsatisfied searchers. Let me give you an example. You search for the word SEO company. Now, if you search for that word, all of us in this room would know that that is not a national or international search. It's actually a local search because Google's machines have learned that people typically would put a word like Dublin or Philadelphia or San Diego at the end of that word to find their solution. So Google does what Google does well. Why make you have to put in extra words if we can just show you what you probably want anyway? So knowing that, right, Google's top suggestions are always local. People are searching for this near me. It's right in front of every SEO person on the planet. So why is it that when I did that search, I found two companies that were thousands of miles away from me, paying $30 a click, paying for it? We're going to talk about that a little bit later. I was looking at this tool, looking at this tool, Looker. One of the most uh, searched for phrases associated with their name is pricing. Awesome. So they rank number one for it. I click on the result. Tell me where you see pricing. Do you see it? I don't. Thanks, Looker. So then I went to the next paid result for Insight Squared. And I said, great. Pr meets requirements, graphs and charts. Really? That's one of your features is like, oh, we're going to do a comparison for you. We're going to tell you, oh, they have graphs and charts. <laughs> Thanks. Where's pricing? You're paying for this click, Insight Squared. Where's the pricing? That's what I said I freaking wanted. Where is it? Nope. Then I looked at my third ad, which is SI Sense, and they gave me all the right signals. How much BI really costs? Yes, cost, pricing, yes. And even their URL, pricing, yes, pricing. Pricing for dummies, yes, pricing. SI Sense pricing plans, how much does BI cost? Yes, pricing. Clicked on their ad. Thought I found my oasis. I'm like, yes, this is going to be the right answer. Here it is. Where's the fucking pricing? You just paid for me to click. You are paying to mislead me. There's real costs. I bet you Google probably couldn't afford this building if people didn't stop buying so many bad clicks. So you look at this and you're like, my God, what? Oh, Jesus. I just wanted the pricing. I just wanted the pricing. So then I started trying to compare it to Tableau. In the process of looking for pricing, oh, Google's going to give an answer all right. If you don't want to give it, Google's not going to go, well, Looker doesn't want to give their pricing, so we're just going to show zero results. No, Google showed a result from PCMag. 
for the word looker pricing. So now you're, because you don't want to help users because you don't want your pricing out there, you're allowing somebody else to mislead your user. Rich snippets. Tableau, their pricing is actually wrong. But because they didn't want to actually tell people what the pricing was for years, which is what we wanted, right? Like I showed you, Looker, the second most searched for phrase with their brand name is the word pricing. And they do not want to give it to you. And they are willing to pay to drive clicks to something that doesn't solve my problem. I look at pages like this around knee surgery. Uh, this was one of our clients. And um, the minute I saw this page, it made me horrified. And I called the client up and said, here's the money. Like, don't even worry about paying for it. I just don't want my team to have to drive clicks to a page that looks like this. Why? Because when you want to get knee surgery, you know what we're competing against? This page. That's why you get knee surgery. Nobody woke up this morning and went, you know what I really want? I want somebody to cut my knee open and give me a, you know, anterior ligament cruciate whatever surgery. No, you're like, I want to get back to travel or I want to get back to my life or gardening or running. That's your why. But sometimes we get so focused on the words we have to use and whatnot that we forget that there's freaking people behind every one of these searches and they're lost and they're looking for an answer. I wish I, I wish, anybody here work at Looker? <laughs> Tableau, I'm, co I'm coming up. I'll come up and I will just start punching you. <laughs> because you know what? Think about what happens if you work for one of those companies. You are putting out there what you fucking hate. You hate when you search for the word pricing and you can't find it because some company doesn't want to give it to you, do you? How often do you search for the word pricing with a software and they don't give it to you and you're like, I'm so glad I got to sign up for your newsletter now. <laughs> I wanted pricing, but now, yeah, sure, give me a white paper. No, I wanted pricing. Just give it to me. So the problem with search today uh, is that so many of us have just minimized people to the words they search for. As if, like, there's nothing else at play there. See, if you look at information like this and read this, and this is a study done on Chinese-American buyers, what tool are you using today that would help you know this? What tool do you have in your arsenal today? SEMrush? Eh. AdWords? Eh. What tool is going to tell you that if a house is on a dead-end street and you believe in feng shui, that that's going to deter a third of your audience from ever buying that house? Where do you get this information in your marketing? I have this little secret for you. It's called talking to people. Talk to your customer. You can't sit behind your desk all day and run searches and pull CSVs and do awesome pivot tables without actually talking to your customer. That's the truth. We j I just found this out two days ago, so I haven't had a chance to put the slides in, thank God, because I would have to cut them out anyway. <laughs> One of our clients is uh, a decking company. They build composite, like, like that like non-wood deck. And I said, Let's go talk to some of their customers, and they let us do it. Actually, no, they didn't let us do it. So I put something out on Facebook that's like, has anybody gotten a deck recently? A bunch of people responded, and we interviewed those people. Don't accept no from your clients, ever. I don't allow it. I go, well, I can survey people on Facebook all day. You can't tell me what I can write on Facebook, can you? Well, then I'm just going to use my audience to find out something about your customer. I'm fighting to learn who your customer is. Guess what we found out was one of the number one things that caused people to want Composite decking over real decking. Splinters. I would have never come up with that on my own. No keyword research tool would have ever taught me that. Anybody here enjoy getting splinters on a wood deck? Anybody here have a kid walking around on a wood deck right now and you're like, I hope he doesn't or she doesn't get a splinter. That was the, that was the catalyst for, for the first four out of seven interviews we did. They all mentioned splinters. Talking to people. So now can I take that knowledge and go to my client and say, okay, how can I talk to people about that and talk to them in the way that they're actually most concerned about? Versus me being like, do you want a composite deck? Because you know what? The keywords you're targeting today were triggered by some other thing before the person typed it into Google. And it's your job to understand what was the catalyst that made that person type this thing into Google. So when you type in composite decking, you know what made you type that into Google? Your little kid got a freaking splinter in his foot. So I got to understand that problem better because that makes me a better marketer. I don't care how good your landing pages are. If you don't understand your customer, I'm going to beat you. <laughs> and the problem is there's no intonation in keyword research, right? Like you don't actually feel the struggle. So we interview customers and talk to them and watch them go through the search results. And I'll show you some of that in a little bit. And you can hear frustration. 
You know, what they, you know what's really good is when you have a site and you watch people go through the web and a pop-up comes up, they always have a freaking bad thing to say about it. But what do we do as marketers? Got to get my numbers up, pop-ups, everywhere. <laughs> so let's do a little bit of a history lesson. 1999, my name is, came out, and this was the kind of SEO most of us were doing. Well, I was doing back then. We're just going to use the word flowers a lot. Yeah, Rankin, Alta Vista, bitches. <laughs> so we did this. And then in 2005, we said, oh, well, Google's out now. Because back in 99, when I started doing search, Google mostly just powered Yahoo. You didn't go to Google as a destination of search. You went to Yahoo, and Google powered Yahoo. By this time, it was like, ooh. We have to get links from sites like eZine articles and Buzzle and selfgrowth.com because it's got high page rank, right? And then around 2012, yeah, that was already five years ago, folks, when you were like, <laughs> or is it, whatever. You know, all these bad SEOs because they still liked SEO were like, I'm now a content marketer. No, you were a keyword stuffing page rank finder. You're not a content marketer. You just pivoted yourself because otherwise you wouldn't have a job. But when you wake up in the morning, you'd much rather spam than help somebody solve a problem with content. And even in this phase, right? Oh, SEO and links and measuring and promote and publish. We're still ignoring something. Even in today's time, we are still ignoring something. We are not listening to our customers. So I am building a plan for my company for 2020 and how we're gonna get there as fast as humanly possible because I'm sharing this with all of you so I don't want you to beat me to my own vision, which is why I'm not gonna tell you all of it, sorry. <laughs> nah, that's not my style at all, I'm gonna tell you all of it. I want you to listen to this. Simple. This is what we're doing now. Photo, editing, text. All right, we are, we are asking users to solve problems on search engines, and we're videoing them and asking them why they're clicking on what they're clicking on, why they're not clicking on other things. We're watching them get to sites of our competitors and saying when they go, oh, this is really good. Well, what do you like about it? Oh, well, it does this, and it does this, and it does that. And we go, huh. Because in my belief, the future, is, the future of the algorithm is going to be much more based on user signals. We're seeing it already. If you search for Will Reynolds right now on Google, you'll find all the results are about me, but the image results are disambiguated. Why? Because there's a model out there named Will Reynolds, and I ain't that model. <laughs> so why did Google start knocking me out of image results but not the rest of the results? Because when you are looking for a model's content, it's their face. I could put a bag over my head right now and you could still get all my content, right? Google's machines are learning that human signals told them Will Reynolds that you see in front of you is not the right answer for a good amount of people who are looking for a model. And when people look for models, they want images. And when people click on, when people search for Will Reynolds, we can probably get rid of half of those images and show the model because they'll be more satisfied as searchers because they'll see that really hot dude and be like, that's the Will Reynolds I wanted. So my bet is on the fact that users and their satisfaction will be baked more and more into the algorithm. That's why when you type in SEO company, it shows all local results, because Google saw people modifying their search for years. They have all this data on that word, and they go, well, most of the people that did that were more satisfied when they found local, when they found local people, so let's just give it to you. Those are two examples of that being right in front of your face. One of the things about this user that I thought was interesting is um, he uses the word simple. And you know what this made us do as a company? We went, right, nobody likes a complicated app. But most people don't type simple in front of their search phrase. But it triggered us and reminded us of that. So then we started thinking, OK, what are some of the other attributes around these words? And I'm going to show you how we're getting that out at scale in a second. But I want to show you another one. Uh, Notice how all the things he's skipping over to click on this one. Trying to avoid the I think that's 2016 one. I'll try 2017. It's more up to date. Plus. Plus I have an iPhone. Plus I have an iPhone. All right. I don't have the time to go through this and, and kind of show you that thing multiple times. But we did this video in January, second week of January. He already believed that anything in 2016 was old. 2016 was just two and a half weeks ago, bro. <laughs> the other thing is the title said iPhone in it. 
If you do a search for uh, photo editing apps, you'll see some of them say 33 best photo editing apps. But no one in here has a hybrid iPhone Android device, do you? So you, why would you want to show me stuff about the iPhone if I have an Android? And for him, he skipped over all those results because he's like, oh, iPhone. I have an iPhone. That's for me. These titles and descriptions have to connect better with customers. I'm going to show you impact as a result of doing it. We interviewed another woman on a mobile. She said, I want something that's recent. And we, so she said that, and we watched her skip over this one from October 22nd, this one from January 2nd. She skipped over this one, this one from December 19th. To click, she skipped over this one from December 2016 and clicked on this one from October 25th. She clicked on the oldest result but said, I want one that's recent. Why? Look at where the dates are. A lot of average users don't look over here. You know where she looked? In the blue where she clicks. So no date, no date, no date, no date, no date. She, she clicked on the number one result, skipped all of these, and clicked on this result. If you are using a click-through rate curve in anything you're recommending for a client right now, you have never talked to a user. I guarantee it. Because if you've ever looked at a user go through the search results, I have never seen somebody go, one, two, three, four. Never. They read, they scan, they skip. You do the same freaking thing, but yet you go to your client like, well, if we're at number two, we're going to get 12% of the clicks. <laughs> Remember how you act on the web yourself. And this is the problem is like, we forgot to talk to the people who buy our shit. We just don't talk to them. And we have to think of like basic human behavior, right? We hate people trying to sell us stuff. But our friends at Google will take your dumb money all day long and paid. Let me show you an example of this. So we're battling for this word cloud computing for a client of ours who I cannot mention because they're so big, they will take everything I own. <laughs> um, so we're battling for the word cloud computing. Two agencies come in with all their content and link shit and get fired and they bring us in. We're like, great. And, but we stopped and said, well, definition's in the first spot. What do you think that means? People want to be educated. Look at your page. It's about selling people shit. So, to, so you're one of the biggest companies on the planet. You don't need more links. You don't need more content. You need to solve users' problems because Google was smart enough to suppress them because the user signals weren't strong enough. And the average SEO came in with the average SEO toolbox. Links and content, links and content. We, interview, we, we didn't even interview customers. We just looked and said, definition, that probably means something. And then we did simple shit, like we didn't hit enter on Google. And we're like, look, people want definitions, PowerPoints, PDFs. They want to know what it means. Basics for dummies. Does your content sound like it solves that person's problem? No, because it's like, here's our pricing, and here's these really complicated things. Let's check the alignment on this, though. This is a paid search ad for IBM for the word cloud computing. Look at it. Does it educate you? Does it give you the basics for dummies, PowerPoints, PDFs? All I had to do was not hit enter to find out what, the most, what the people were looking for. Does it look like it gives you any of that at $35 to $40 a click? 50,000 searches a month, a lot of money spent. It's getting us this room, right? <laughs> Microsoft, paid landing page. Look at it really closely, because uh, the presentation you were doing before about the machine learning and the stuff you're working on, I got to get you connected to one of our guys, because you guys are doing some cool shit. I'm trying to walk in your footsteps. But we're doing things like comparing paid search landing pages to the organic landing pages at scale with machines to see how different they are. Because what I'm about to show you is why they're wasting money, because they're not solving the user's problem. So here, Microsoft Azure, right? If you don't know what cloud computing is, what are the odds that you want to try SQL Server 2016 SP1? $50, 30 40 $50 a click, 50,000 searches a month. They're, they're still there. I bet you if you search for it, you'll see them. This site paid for the word cloud computing and wouldn't even tell me what they did. <laughs> Get in the funnel, right? Funnel, 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 funnel. You're like, oh, well, I just I wanted a definition, man. Like, if you didn't hit, if any of your smart people just didn't hit enter on Google, you would see the number one word that people want to know when they search for cloud computing is definition. No, you want to get in my funnel. <laughs> Look, images. Why does Google's machine learning think that images, not always, this is fluctuating, but at the time I took the screen grab, images are the right answer for cloud computing. Because when you're trying to explain to your grandmother or your mom how cloud computing works, you're like, I have a computer at home. And when I type stuff on it and click save, and then I go to work, 
it's there too. And you have to draw a little line for grandma so she understands how the cloud works. Google realized that that's what people also wanted. They wanted things to describe it. Now look at the IBM page all of a sudden for their organic ranking. Does it look anything like that other IBM page I just showed you? Nope. Notice how they talk. What is cloud computing? Right, that's what people freaking wanted. Oh, all of a sudden Microsoft to rank organically has a beginner's guide. But on paid, they don't. They want to sell you SQL Server 2016 SP1. Ah. One of the things I, I am giving my team so much money to go do is to go out and actually talk to people. One of the most interesting things we found for one of our clients, again, decking client. We went to Home Depot, which is in the United States, it's like a home, home improvement store, big box home improvement store. And what we learned through observing behaviors at Home Depot, when people, people would go into Home Depot thinking they wanted my client's product. They got to Home Depot and this lovely lady goes, oh, that's the expensive stuff. You want the cheaper one that's just as good. You're not gonna get splinters with this one either. So all the digital marketing in the world was not there for that customer at his zero moment of truth. So that client, because don't you love it, the Wolfgang team, don't you love it when clients let you do great work, right? Because this client allowed us to basically build a paid search campaign on the latitude and longitude of every Home Depot and Lowe's, specifically targeting the words and the brands that those associates were saying, so we could at least try to fight against that, those new queries. Because those people went in having typed in one thing, got in front of the associate, and started typing in new words when they were at Home Depot. Oh, I didn't know that brand existed. I'm going to type that in now. And then I'm going to type that in and say, what's the warranty on it? What's this? What's that? And I want to target you right then and there. Talking to people. One of our clients said, oh, you know, all of our, all of our customers are contractors. This is after they spent $300,000 with some content marketing agency to build them content for contractors. We interviewed seven people. We begged to interview seven people. They said, okay. We said, well, we've learned all this stuff. Let's change all these pages. They said, no. We went, what the Freak. So we said, will you let us change one meta description, just one, based on what we learned? They went, okay, we'll let you do that. That's how I try to get my team to, get, to let my clients let us do good work for them. If you come in and say, I want to change all these pages you just spent $300,000 on, they're like, no, thank you. But if you say, can I just change one? And then we'll get the data and we'll see. We changed this description. It'll go from this to this, which is not written for, is not as technical. It's more for the generic people that we interviewed and learned from. And we saw a 57% increase in click-through rate and a 59% in conversions from this one page by just changing the meta description and the title to more connect with people. Simple. People want guidance. They don't want another ultimate guide. People want guidance, not guides. Let me show you an example of if you actually get into building guidance for people, how you can use it in paid and bridge some SEO and paid stuff, which I'm super excited about. So if I'm gonna move into an office, anybody here ever move your company into an office? Like one of the hardest things is like, how much space do I need? You buy too much, you're spending for years. You buy too little, you gotta to move too early and then you gotta break your lease and it's expensive. When people build tools like these, ask yourself, where do you have a tool like this that really helps somebody figure out how to solve their problem? You get to do really interesting things. Now, not with this specific example, but imagine if I had a little button here that was one, five, or 10 plus. Each one of those that you click can create an event. Each one of those events lets you adjust your bids for PPC. So if you're a small company and you only put in that you have one executive office, I can make sure that I never show my ads to you because I don't want to spend money on you when you type in office supplies or office related keywords. But if I got a 20 here and you click on it and you're a whale, I can actually adjust my bids up. I can remarket and target you differently. So many content marketers are out there building great content that solves people's problems, but because they're not trying to understand how paid works too, they don't even know to do this. Oh, I'm gonna skip some of this. Um, no, 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 a decent time. So um, one of the things I like to do tactically is I like to use a tool called Stat. Um, you can use uh, Authority Labs or any tool that just scrapes Google. You may have your own. And I like to um, take out the, uh, the people, uh, the, the suggested results at the bottom and then run simple things like word clouds on them to understand, if I look at 10,000 different suggested results at the bottom, or 8,000, let's just say, um, what are the big words that people are shifting to? We did this for a client who has an app that does photo editing. 
Notice some of the things that we learned about people by doing this. Um, we did that this way, and we also put in another data set um, by looking at the search query report, because on, pa on pay-per-click, right, on PPC, you get matched to all kinds of words. So therefore, we found all the long tail of words that were also converting. So we only wanted words that were converting. You see the word best, which we'll talk about in a second. Blemish, teeth. What's another cool one? Uh, airbrushing, wrinkle, easy, easy. There again, that's what people wanted to know was easy. I, white, guess what? People were getting photo editors to make themselves look better on Tinder. That was their why. I found it in their search query reports because some of those crazy long tails show you things that you otherwise wouldn't have thought of. So instead of me talking about the features of the photo editor, I'm like, look better in your Tinder profile. We're testing it right now, I'll tell you how it works. Another thing to think of here is Look at the results and start classifying them. So another thing that we're trying to do at scale is classifying results to see if they are recommendation results or if they, people want companies, and here's why. So I typed in photo editing app. Look at the results, aggregator, 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 comparing them. Once, one, how many times do you search for something generic like photo editing app and just click on one of the results and install it on your phone? Never. You want people, you want reviews. See all the different sites that are reviewing stuff, right? You get to the bottom, you start scraping these out at scale, you start being like, oh, people wanna know what the best is. Now the thing you have to think of is, Google is showing mostly review sites for the query best. What does that mean for you? You're not, okay, if I typed in best interactive agency in Dublin, and Wolfgang showed up as the number one, would you just trust him? Would you just, do you just trust most companies that when you put in best in front of your query that if it's a company that ranks that they must be the best? No. You're like, I don't trust you to tell me that you're not the best. Of course you're gonna say you're the best. That's why we like review sites. So you should be looking for your modifiers of keywords and if you see modifiers that go, we're not the right answer for that modifier, then you've gotta be thinking, ooh, well how many of those sites show up in the GDN? So I can get my brand in front of them while they're looking for the best whatever. Because at that point, I'm not the right answer. Because Google's already telling you we're showing 90% of the results are all review sites. You are a company trying to get people in your funnel. And there's a lot more you could do. Once you find the sites that are ranking for this, you can do banners. You can swap pixels if you want to be really cool with them and partner. Swap retargeting pixels, right? Oh, you're searching for best? You're eventually going to search for a company. That's cool to do. Um, there's a lot of things you can do once you make this realization. I'm also a big fan of scraping out people also asks at scale. So I just take them out of a, again, I use stat. It's my favorite tool because a guy that doesn't know how to code can get this at scale. And then I start looking at what domains are most likely showing up as the one answer most often. And of course, a lot of times you'll see Wikipedia and whatnot, but when you don't, this will also tell you these are the sites that people are going to visit before they buy your stuff because they're looking for the best, they're looking for reviews, they're getting all those reviews on all these sites, and then they may end up on yours. So are you getting links from these sites that have all this visibility? Are you getting it from some mom blogger somewhere that doesn't rank for any of the words that people are ever really gonna search for? Because it's good for your page rank. So the thing you have to start looking at is, okay, when people are saying, how do I edit a picture? I could write that content in theory, um, but it's very telling to know that, well, Tech Radar shows up, let me go back one, for tons of people also asks to the tune of 16 million searches. Just around photo editing alone, that's it. I gotta partner with them. You look at simple things like we do, like oh, if I type in combined power plant for, uh, for one of our clients, GE, and you're like great, we got the featured snippet, and yeah, we have number one. Job's done, right? Wrong. People also ask. Google's telling you, the machine learning is telling you, well, when people search for combined cycle power plant, which you're number one for, and you have the rich snippet for, woohoo, um, they also ask these questions. You have to bring these questions to your client and go, which ones of those are we the right answer for? Because the problem is, is when you see a people also ask, you click on them. You go, oh, I did want to know that next. Google's like, yeah, the machine learning has taught us that, dummy. But then when I clicked on bottoming cycle, which I had never heard of before, energycenter.org had that one. So I don't want to just own this one. I want to own every one of these two. And when I tell my client why they, why they should write that content, if it makes sense for their business, the reason goes something like this. Google has seen this search done hundreds of thousands of times. 
with all kinds of factors on how many words people search for before and after, whether they were on mobile, desktop, and they have determined with machines that these are the questions people are highly likely to ask when they show up for that, when they search for this. Why would we not want to help those users get the right answer and be the, be the answer for them? So we're kind of testing this right now. Um, I did a search for like SEM Rush guide or something. People also ask, showing at the bottom. I tend to believe that when you see people also ask or certain rich snippets like definitions or images showing up lower in the results, Google's less certain that that's the right answer. So it stays down. Watch one SERP over time and you'll see it start to move up if Google thinks that's a good answer and it'll stay at the bottom if they, or it'll go away if they don't think it's a good answer. So I started looking at these results here and I saw SEM Rush versus Moz was something that a lot of people who search for SEM Rush were looking for. So we start, we're testing this right now. So we rank number one for like SEM Rush guide, I think. And this result, actually, as you scroll down, pops up something that's like, are you looking for, uh, to compare SEM Rush to Moz? And we're linking out to another site. I just want to see if people go, that is what I was looking for, and click on it. Because if I do that, think about how that's going to look to Google into their algorithm. Oh, that's a satisfied searcher. They didn't come back for ages. Because I'm continuing to push them onto other sites and keep them from going back to Google, which is always a bad signal that maybe you didn't find what you wanted. Not always, but sometimes. I'm running that right now. So if you go to our SEM Rush guide, you can be a part of my test. Last thing I'm gonna leave you with is, oh, that came out kind of pixelated. Um, look for the difference between mobile and desktop conversion rates. Something that our SEO team is doing a ton of, they're just doing CRO on mobile forms and getting huge lift in conversions. So we're seeing clients are going, get me more traffic, and we're looking at this and we're being like, no, the answer's not get me more traffic. The answer is help me to convert the traffic I already got. As Google's machines get smarter about you not answering the right questions, you're gonna lose traffic. So you better up your skills to start learning how to get more of that traffic to convert because there's gonna be a time where you're not gonna be able to make the traffic go up and to the right anymore. For one of our clients, 63% increase in mobile conversions and they end up having a 50% increase in, now their traffic's about 50-50. So now we're getting them more money as a result. I'm just gonna leave the last one up. Ah, the last one up. 24% increase by fixing a client's mobile form. We didn't get any more traffic for them. We're looking at the discrepancy between their mobile conversion and their desktop conversion, comparing that to the typical, which there's a study out there that I should have linked to, but I didn't. And, um, and we looked at that and we said, we're significantly over that. So therefore, that's what we should fix. Stop building links. Start fixing people's mobile experiences, and that is real conversion increase. So as search professionals, there's only one thing I want you to do. Empathize before you optimize. Spend time trying to understand who these people are and be committed to trying to solve their problem. And I think that's how we're all going to win on search in the future. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you there. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks so much. There are no words. Have you ever heard anybody speak about marketing with that passion? Amazing. Love it.